So I said, Senator, just so you know, I'm gay. And he said, you've got game? I, I just saw it. I'm standing right here, Ben. We all saw it. I thought you said, you guys see the first gay president or the first woman president? We already president? have it with Obama. So. I said, no, Senator, I really am gay. And it took about five or six times to clarify <laughs> out of the elevator, down the stairs, into the car. And I said, Senator, I just want to tell you I really am gay. And you know Michelle is a trans. I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. Some extremely intriguing information has come to light about former U.S. President Barack Obama recently. Rumor has it that the man might actually be gay and is refusing to come out of the closet for fear of humiliation. Recently, as I've said, you know, my feelings about this are constantly uh, evolving. I struggle with this. Back in 1982, when Barack Obama was just 21 years old, he wrote a letter to his ex-girlfriend, Alex McNear, and shared some personal thoughts on sexuality. In the letter, which recently resurfaced, he talked about his views on homosexuality and his own imaginative experiences. At the time, Obama was a student at Occidental College in Los Angeles. A new glimpse of the young Barack Obama. Two ex-girlfriends during the 1980s are sharing their stories for the first time in a new book, Barack Obama, The Story. In this letter, he expressed his belief that homosexuality might be a way for individuals to disconnect from the challenges of daily life. He wrote, in regard to homosexuality, I must say that I believe this is an attempt to remove oneself from the present, a refusal perhaps to perpetuate the endless farce of earthly life. He acknowledged having intellectual connections with men, but emphasized that these connections were solely in the realm of imagination. And I personally am going to continue to wrestle with going forward. He stated, you see, I make love to men daily, but in the imagination. The letter, over 40 years old now, resurfaced during an extensive interview conducted by biographer David Garrow. Garrow explored Obama's thoughts and revealed how the young Obama pondered an androgynous perspective, wanting to see people as a whole rather than just as distinct genders. Despite these reflections, Obama affirmed his identity as a man and accepted the physical aspect of his being. He wrote, but in returning to the body, I see that I have been made a man and physically in life, I choose to accept that contingency. McNear had initially redacted some explicit sections of the letter when their relationship ended, but Pulitzer Prize winning historian Garrow managed to find and include those passages in his biography titled Rising Star. The letter itself is currently held by Emory University and is not available for photography or removal. However, Harvey Clare, a friend of Garrow, transcribed the redacted parts by hand and shared them with the author. And these revelations have certainly ignited a firestorm of controversy on the internet. This person tweeted about the whole Joan Rivers case, saying, the late Joan Rivers, who was once very close with both Barack and Michelle Obama, told the world how Barack was gay and the first gay president, and Michelle was actually a transgender woman, born a man. The next week, Joan Rivers was found dead. Whilst this person wasn't really surprised by the news, not at all shocking that Barack Obama is gay, one person, though, pointed out a very chilling precedent in the way things had turned out, saying, it's been an open secret for years Barack Obama is gay. I've had so many people say to me, so what if he is? It's not the fact he's gay, it's the fact he's been dishonest about who he is. If Obama has been lying about this, what else has he been lying about? So much of that man's entire history has been sealed, scrubbed, and rewritten going back decades now. Over the years, Barack Obama's views on various matters, including LGBTQ plus rights, have evolved. Despite once stating that he didn't believe marriage was a civil right and opposing homosexual marriage, he later changed his stance while in the White House. In 2015, he celebrated the federal legalization of same-sex marriage. His journey and reflections on these topics are a part of his broader development as a political figure. Historian David Garrow, who revealed these aspects of Obama's past, emphasized that sexual fantasies are common among individuals. He commented, as a historian and not a psychologist, I observe that it's well known that a significant majority of individuals have their share of sexual fantasies. Alongside his personal evolution, Obama's political journey included support for LGBTQ plus rights. He advocated for the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell and the Defense of Marriage Act, rejected the federal marriage amendment and pushed for recognition of state laws regarding same-sex relationships. Although he initially didn't support marriage equality, he endorsed civil unions that granted same-sex couples similar legal rights as heterosexual couples. All right, let's rewind to 2018 for a juicy story that made waves. 
You won't believe this. A dude with a criminal record who claimed he hooked up with President Barack Obama was making a run for mayor in a Florida town. This guy, Larry Sinclair, went all out in 2008. While Obama was going full throttle in his presidential race, Sinclair got up on stage at the National Press Club and let it rip. He spilled the beans that the then senator was into some crazy stuff. He allegedly bought and smoked cocaine and got frisky with Sinclair back in 1999. Shocking, right? Now hold on, Sinclair wasn't just your average Joe. He's had his fair share of run-ins with the law in Arizona, Florida, and Colorado. We're talking about charges like forgery, fraud, and larceny, but that didn't stop him from chasing his dreams. In 2018, he was putting all his chips on the table to win the mayor's spot in Coco, a cozy Florida town with around 19,000 residents. This dude didn't hold back with his accusations. He even had a whole book published in 2009 titled Barack Obama and Larry Sinclair, Cocaine, Sec, Lies, and Murder. Can you believe the audacity? And he wasn't about to backpedal. Sinclair straight up said, my book speaks for itself and I do not backtrack anything that I said at that press conference. Let's flip the calendar back to 2014, where the legendary Joan Rivers was causing a stir of her own. She officiated a same-sex wedding, and of course, reporters wanted to get her take on the future. They asked her if she thought the U.S. would ever see a gay or female president, and Joan, being her usual unfiltered self, dropped some gems. She quipped, We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. You know, Michelle, Obama is a trans. But wait, it doesn't stop there. When asked to elaborate, she clarified that she meant Michelle was a transgender person. Classic Joan, never one to hold back. Now get this, Joan's spokesperson jumped in to defend her and things got spicy. The spokesperson said Joan saw it as a compliment, calling Michelle attractive, tall, with a beautiful body, great face, does great makeup. And what's really, really suspicious is that Joan died shortly after these revelations. I'll let you draw the conclusions from that. There have been some crazy rumors surrounding Obama in general. You've probably heard the basics. He's supposedly a Muslim, a socialist, and there's even the wild claim that he wasn't born in the U.S., making him ineligible for the presidency. But hold on tight because there's a rumor that goes beyond politics. Apparently, some folks were saying Obama is gay. Yep, you read that right. There were whispers about his sequel orientation, and the plot thickens. Rumor had it that he wasn't just living a quiet life either. There were allegations that he used to frequent gay bathhouses in Chicago, and he wasn't alone in this adventure. His former chief of staff and now Chicago mayor, Rahm Emanuel, was apparently his bathhouse buddy. But wait, there's more intrigue. It's said that when he was a young boy in Indonesia, he was influenced by a transgender nanny. And if that's not enough to keep your jaw dropping, there's this gem. During his college years at Occidental College, he supposedly had a marriage with his Pakistani roommate. Some even claimed the ring he wore was a secret homosexual symbol. But hold your horses, we're not done with the gossip mill just yet. Enter Kevin Dujon, a blogger who had quite the theory. According to him, Reggie Love, the basketball player turned body man for Obama, was actually more than just his aide, he was his lover. Dujan even boldly predicted that Obama would soon overshadow Elton John as the ultimate party king and gay icon. And if that's not enough, there's this guy Wayne Madsen, a right-wing journalist who spilled the beans on Obama's supposed visits to gay bathhouses. Madsen even claimed that Obama used basketball games as a way to pick up men. He listed quite the lineup of alleged flings, including Representative Artur Davis, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, and Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist crazy, right? And there's yet another voice in the mix, Paul Cameron from the Family Research Institute. He didn't shy away from sharing his thoughts on the matter. While he wasn't entirely convinced about the specifics of Obama's rumored encounters, he thought that Obama's support for gay marriage added a certain weight to the whole story. So, according to Cameron, there might be more to the rumors than meets the eye. Fast forward to more recent times, and we've got a twist from none other than Obama's half-brother in Kenya. This man is definitely gay, Malik Obama purportedly said recently in a since-deleted tweet. The post, which was reported by multiple media outlets, came in response to a letter in which Barack Obama denounced the banning of controversial books in children's libraries, including at least one that features graphic illustrations of gay sexual acts. Malik Obama, who has the same father as the ex-president, visited the White House several times during his brother's first term in office. However, he later claimed that Barack Obama was cold and ruthless and blasted him for abandoning his Kenyan family. 
What I saw was the kind of person that wants people to worship him, Malik Obama told the New York Post in 2020. He needs to be worshipped, and I don't do that. I'm his older brother, so I don't do that. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.